So, uh, what are we planning to do for this set? Well, we just got open space here. Yeah, there's there's not much left in this studio, is there? Not since COVID. What about something like this? Dude! Hey! Uh, I've been, been practicing since the Harry Potter episode, huh? That was my quarantine hobby, was uh, learning dark magic. This, this should work. This should work. All right. <sighs> Good ah. to be back. Let's shoot this episode, shall we? Yeah. Hello and welcome to Geeking Out About It. We are thrilled to be back in our studio for the first time in over a year. The last time we were here was our Harry Potter episode in February of 2020. My name is Chance Jagir. And I'm Sam Coons. And today we're here to talk about Marvel Studios' WandaVision. WandaVision is the first entry in Phase 4 of the Marvel Cinematic Universe and was released on Disney Plus at the beginning of this year. The series follows Wanda Maximoff in the town of Westview, New Jersey, shortly after the events of Avengers Endgame. But keep in mind, for Wanda, this is a few short weeks after the events of Infinity War in Wakanda where, just for a recap, she was forced to kill Vision, watch Vision come back to life, uh, watch him get killed again by Thanos, disintegrate, get undisintegrated, fight Thanos again, watch Tony Stark die, go to Tony Stark's funeral, try to get Vision's body back. It's been a rough couple weeks for her, to say the least. Yeah, pretty bad. You took everything from me. Anyway, Wanda releases a giant burst of chaos magic over the innocent town of Westview, New Jersey, transforming it into a 1950s sitcom and bringing back Vision in some way, shape, or form, where she just tries to have a happy little life with him. Meanwhile, agents from S.W.O.R.D. are investigating this anomaly and trying to figure out what exactly is going on in there. Now let's go into an in-depth uh, look at the characters of WandaVision. Starting things off with Wanda herself, uh, everyone should pretty much know who she is. She has had been a major role in the MCU ever since her first appearance in Age of Ultron. Now Wanda's mind state in the state of the show, like we said, is not exactly the best because she's been through a lot of trauma recently. So her story is just her trying to hold on to everything that she can. She wants Vision back. She wants a family and she wanted to have a home somewhere. The Avengers were her home, but they kind of fell apart in Civil War, and it was kind of due to her fault. Now, that's not exactly the best kind of scenario, the kind of weight to carry on your shoulder, so she feels very responsible, she isolated herself away, and she's acting very hostile to anyone that comes near her. It's very kind of sad to watch as a viewer, but very good storytelling. Next up, we have the second half of the title, Vision, everybody's favorite robotic husband, especially Wanda's. Uh, this isn't quite the Vision that we know from the previous MCU movies. It's revealed that this is a sort of newer incarnation of Vision created by Wanda when she made this large hex, the 1950s sitcom world. Up next, we have Monica Rambo. Now, she is a new entry, but also a callback to a previous movie in Captain Marvel we were introduced to a little girl who was the daughter of Captain Marvel's best friend, Rambo, and she grew up. It's been a while, because that movie took place in the 90s, and she is Captain Rambo. She is very, very useful in the show, and she's one of the key members that we see through the eyes through of figuring out what's actually happening throughout the series. Next up, we have Jimmy Woo, an FBI investigator first introduced in Ant-Man and the Wasp otherwise known as TikTok's favorite character. When this show was airing, I couldn't scroll past more than two or three videos on my For You page without people losing their minds over Randall Park appearing in any show. Um, but he works with Darcy and Monica to kind of investigate behind the scenes and out of the eyes of S.W.O.R.D. to really figure out what's going on. We love you, Jimmy Woo. Jimmy Woo! James E. Woo, FBI. Uh, mm -hmm. Up next, another character that we need to talk about is Agatha Harkness. Now, in the comics, this character is very, very aggressive, serious, 
and pretty downright evil. Uh, one of the greatest challenges that Wanda ever faces because of her use of magic. Uh, in the show, Agatha is a hidden enemy, and uh, turns out it was her all along. It's been Agatha all along. Now we are going to pitch to a commercial break, so we will see you guys in a bit. This show is absolutely packed full of comic book references and MCU callbacks, particularly in the commercials of this show, and that is precisely what I want to talk about. Starting things off with the Stark Industries Toastmate 200, a home appliance device utilizing the latest in Stark technologies. Now, this reference is tremendously on the nose for any fan of the MCU and references the Stark family of inventors. And if you don't know who they are, say hello to Iron Man. He is, you know, kind of a big deal. Wanda was first introduced to the end of the MCU in the Age of Ultron, and a huge dividing force for her was her hatred of Tony Stark. His weapons were responsible for the death of her parents, and that's not exactly something that's easy to forgive. Now, the show product's tagline is, forget the past, this is your future, and it's clear to say that Wanda is digging into her past and not letting go. Following things up, we have the Strucker Watch. This commercial directly uses the name of Baron Strucker, the head scientist of Hydra who created the Maximoff twins himself in the MCU. The creators also add some fun with some little details on the watch. It reads Strucker, Swiss made, Hydra. Pulling all different elements from Wanda's history and the organization known as Hydra. And if you don't know who Hydra is, then uh, once again, they're everywhere. Might want to give it a look. Especially because this next product is called the Hydra Soak and gave us tremendous insight into what's actually happening. While the callback was ordinary, simply referencing Hydra, the subtext helps us piece together what's actually happening in the story of WandaVision. The commercial narrator says, Come with me. Escape to a world all on your own where your problems will float away. When you want to get away but don't know where to go, don't go anywhere. Hydra Soak, find the goddess within. Now, this is the first real clue that we have for Wanda forcing people to do what she wants because she can't let go of her very own past. Big, insightful moment. Up next, we have Laugos Paper Towels. I am almost positive this went over most people's heads, and Laugos is a reference to a pretty big moment in the MCU. In the movie Captain America Civil War, you might remember a little skirmish with a man named Crossbones. In this desert city environment, Crossbones got the upper hand on Cap and detonated a bomb on his chest. Wanda contained the explosion and sent it up into the air, where it impacted a nearby building, killing the people inside. This detonation set off the events of Civil War, and this city's name was Laugos. Obviously, this memory lingers deep inside Wanda's head, as it had its very own commercial cameo. Up next, we have Yo Magic Yogurt. This commercial stands out to me as I can't think of any direct references, but once again, I think this commercial's purpose is to serve as a clue as how to the inhabitants of Westview are feeling, starved of life and magic at the source of this. Overall, this commercial is definitely one of the darkest. And finally, we have the Nexus Antidepressants. Once again, a bit obscure. Even comic book goers may have missed this one. In the comics, Wanda is referred to herself as a Nexus being, aka someone who can wield the chaos and rework the very fibers of the universe, and more on the nose, someone who can change the points of the Nexus of reality. Now, this feels like it will tie into what will happen in Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness. As we already know, Wanda will be involved in some way. The tagline stinger at the end of the commercial only further cements the idea, saying that Nexus, because the world doesn't revolve around you. Or does it? And in Wanda's case, it quite literally does revolve around her. Now, there is one final thing that I would like to mention, and it's not a commercial in the show, but rather the final after credit scene of episode 9. In this scene, Wanda is seen projecting herself and performing different tasks, reading books, doing things, very much like we've seen Doctor Strange himself do. In this scene, Wanda has taken the Book of the Damned, or the Darkhold, for any Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. viewers out there, well, sparse and few you are, for herself. Now, this book is very bad news, and it is damned for a reason. It has dark magics that nobody should know, and it looks like my suspicions about Wanda's role in the Multiverse of Madness may come true. If she's reading from this book, then she might very well be our main villain of the movie. Now, that's all the things that I wanted to address, so let's go back to the conversation. Oh, there you are. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, how commercial? Was commercial? Commercial good, yeah. Good, good. All right, things are settled. Uh, in other words, you should really watch WandaVision. There's a lot going on in that show, and it was really interesting to see. Yeah, there's really not much else to say. Like, if you like Marvel in any way, shape, or form, go watch this show. It's great. It's, it's definitely a slow burn. The first 
three episodes are entirely in the sitcom format, um, but it really reveals a lot about how the universe has changed after the snap and the blip. Yeah, it's very insightful into the universe of the MCU going forward, so it's always worth going and checking out something like that, especially if you love all these movies like I do. Thank you so much for watching this episode of Geeking Out About It. I've been Chance Jagir. And I've been Sam. If you enjoyed this, be sure to check out more KBVR TV content. There's a playlist with all the episodes of Geeking Out About It. Be sure to follow KBVR TV on social media. We've got Twitter and Instagram. Uh, follow us on Twitch at twitch.tv slash kbvrtv26. And we hope to see you in the next episode of Geeking Out About It.